Hello everyone, it's me, Emmett, the old elderly punk rocker, for another fascinating show. There is so much to talk about, it's oh, unbelievable, including, you know that backpack that I had for 30 years, since 19, I think 1985 or so, 95, 2005, for uh, 29 years it finally fell apart. I had to use this bag. I'm having to use this bag. And this isn't even a very good backpack. It's just a tiny knapsack something. That I was trying to do some show prep and get the zipper completely broke. The whole thing practically fell apart. And after 29 years, that backpack is history. And I have used that, you know, that, that, that backpack you may have seen for your long time viewers. You have it here somewhere else. I got you know, the end school suspension. I have my Bible, and I always have it at home and my notes and everything. It was an old camouflage backpack, the type you would use in high school, you know, for your um, books and that kind of thing, school books and school work, school notes. That's what I always used. I've done my show now for 19 years. December of this year will be the 20th anniversary it aired. And, I, you know, so it fell apart. What a time for it to fall, fall apart. And I'm going to have to get a new backpack. Oh. I can't believe of all things. Fell apart just a few days ago for the shoot. I couldn't believe it. I honestly couldn't believe it. Un B. Leuven's irreparable. A friend of mine said, well, why don't you just, you know, stitch it. You know, I don't, I'm not a sewing person. I don't know how to do it. So you could pay for someone to stitch it, you know. Hey, you know what? For that money, I think I'll just go buy another one. It's pretty serious. I'm going to miss that backpack very much. Yeah, I'm going to miss that backpack terribly. After 19 years, this is just unbelievable. I want to make sure everything's going well in there. Yeah, I don't. After 19 years, oh, when things wear out, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Can you believe that? Completely wore out. I don't want to get a cheap one, but I don't need a big one. I want something pretty sturdy. I'll have to figure out what to do. You know. Unbelievable. <sighs> Some refresh cola, cream soda. Hmm. Some bugles. I'm not going to let anyone like Michelle Obama tell me what to eat and drink. Come on. Unfortunately, I didn't tell you. Before we get into my main topic, which I've wanted another one I've wanted to talk about for so long, well, I haven't gotten a chance to do it. But they even promote healthy eating, I mean, on Sprout TV, you know, Channel 103, if you've got charter cable. The toddler TV I love so much. I don't even want, oh, it's horrible. Oh. 
Michelle Obama has been been on there. On the Chica show with Chica. Promoting her get up and move campaign. Which to me is so stupid. The exercise campaign. The reason it's stupid, one, with all the pedophiles running around the street wanting to rape the little boys, how can you let your kids play outside? Parents are terrified to let their kids play outside. It's sad. That's what you got when you got a pedophile behind every tree. Second of all, you know, she promotes the hell, you know, all the kids are on medication, antipsychotic medication. And it's absolutely horrible. And when you're on that medication, you just drool and go, how can you get up and move? I don't, I wonder even a lot of these liberals realize what they're giving to their kids. The stuff they're getting to toddlers now for ADHD, it's hardcore psych medication like the type they have at Warm Springs, where people just do a Thorazine shovel and, you know, it's the hardcore stuff. Where you can only basically just shuffle around and do this. And that's it. Sit around and drool and sleep. You can't get up and move if you're just doing a Thorazine shuffle. And all the kids now are doing a pretty much a Thorazine shuffle just vegetated on the medication. It is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. That's why there's some, one's the reason there's so much obesity, because the meds make you gain weight, you know. If we didn't have a medicated generation, kids would be able to uh, uh, get up and move and exercise, and they wouldn't be obese. It's that simple. Say it again. Ah. Uh. Second of all, I hate it. To me, I think it's the parents' responsibility to teach what's healthy and not. And not a, a stupid show. Now, I don't mind the old-fashioned four food groups. When I was watching cartoons as a kid, in the 1970s, they always had, you know, fitness and nutrition and that kind of thing. The four food groups. I haven't told you about that, Dave at the welfare office, those cartoons at the welfare office. Now, it's this guy named Sporticus, kind of different than Spartacus, Sporticus. On the Let's Move campaign show in the afternoon, well, there are a lot of cartoons I don't want, watch, like Super Y or Just In Time, and there's all this guy named Sporticus, and Sporticus is advertising sports candy, meaning fruits and vegetables are a healthy treat. Only fruits and vegetables, and that's it. I call it sports candy. You cannot run and do exercise if you have a diet of only fruits and vegetables. I ought to watch that show more and see about that maybe in the afternoon. I hope he prom promotes the four food groups. Oh, we have this stupid food pyramid, so he doesn't. They say don't eat so much red meat. Boy, I don't agree with that. It used to be a little milk, meat, meat of course, ham, you know, bacon or you know, red or white meat, vegetables and bread. Any servings of that a day, you know. But ugh. unbelievable. <laughs> First, we must pray. Oh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 
Heavenly Father, Mary, Mother of God, by the intercession, give me the grace to do this show perfectly. Protect me always from all evil in Jesus' name. This is Tuesday that we're filming this. We're praying a decade of the rosary again. Doing the sorrowful mysteries. And the first sorrowful mystery is the agony of Jesus in the garden. Where Jesus sweats blood in the garden of all is before his crucifixion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Knit all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very important we pray the rose in these times of terrible evil. Ugh. I'm going to miss that backpack. Ugh. It's been like one of my best friends since high school. It's all in tatters now. Well, it was a very good backpack. If it lasts me that long, it was excellent. Superb, but I guess they don't make it, no backpack can last forever. But it was history. Huh. Maybe we need it in a museum now. Oh. Well, it's me. What is this show? This is The Awful Truth About Society with Emmett, the old LA punk rocker. I would call it episode 455, my own in-school suspension. Again, I'm in my in-school suspension for embracing and loving my close friends and living the true Christian faith. That's what I always done in middle school and everything. I'd call it Outrage of Jerry Sandusky's Double Life. Society only looks at conformity, not character. How true. How true. Now, I have wanted to discuss this for so long, but I kept getting interrupted, and, you know, a lot of other things were coming up. I wasn't able to talk about it, you know. Oh. For so long. 
I have wanted to talk about Jerry Sandusky. And this was a couple of years ago, the whole thing. A couple of years ago, he was convicted of child molestation. So this is another thing I want to talk about for about a year and a half, but I've been so busy. Maybe I should have talked about it earlier, but we had the election year, we had all this stuff. Sometimes I couldn't do a show. I should have done it. And sometimes we've been closed, and there have been times that the studio has been booked. By that time, there's something else important of an emergency to talk about. So again, for the first time, I can talk about Jerry Sandusky. Ugh. Unfortunately, I don't have the paper anymore about Sandusky's double life. <clears throat> I can't read from the paper. But about a, you see, he was one of the big football coaches at Penn State. I think it was Penn State or Penn State or something. I'm not positive, but it was one of the prestigious universities that exists. He was one of the prestigious coaches over there. He was an elderly man. But, oh, yeah. The thing is, he mentored youth. And he mentored youth some more in a sports program for the youth at the college. To mentor them, help them stay in school, that kind of thing. And... Unbelievable. He was all American. He was a pedophile, but a great football coach, all American. And basically, he was conv he had been raping children in the shower, not sleeping with them. That's not like Michael Jackson or anything. Because Michael Jackson was an innocent, innocent man. But all of a sudden, there were these damning revelations. So many children coming forward and saying that they were raped in the shower by Jerry Sandusky, the elderly pedophile. He's a football coach. And all of these allegations, Penn State kept it under the rug and swept it under the rug. Say it again. There were a lot of people who kind of knew what was going on, but looked the other way. Finally, he was convicted after a long trial. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. When he was asked on TV, Are you a pedophile? He didn't say, well, he didn't say no. He didn't say, absolutely not, that's disgusting, I'm going to court to fight for good, my good name. That's what I would have said. That's what most of you would have said, you know. He said, well, you know, not really. I, I, I love kids. I love being around kids. But I don't know, you know. Such an evasive answer. Well, he was known to have raped children in the shower rooms when they were changing, you know, for, from football practice. Raped them and raped them. The parents always trusted him. Their kids could sleep at Jerry Sandusky's all-American house all the time, and the parents just trusted them with the children, and he raped all the children at his home. Just, I mean, I'm not just inappropriate touching or whatever, whatever anyone could say. And by the way, tickling your stomach child's stomach and hugging and cuddling is not <clears throat> inappropriate touching. We're talking rape. Take your clothes off and rape those children up the ass. Cornhole them. That's what he was convicted of. Finally, he was convicted. He was convicted. He was kind of snickering. Just kind of snickering. But then that old you know, pedophile was convicted and sent away from prison to, for life. Say it again. He's up in prison now. I don't even know if he's alive anymore. 
They would have had to have PC, PC'd him up somewhere in solitary confinement. The other inmates would kill him. Even when he was being marched down a cell block, the other inmates played the song, you know, We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. You should have left those kids alone. <laughs> I love it. And he was still, from what I heard, I guess he must have been put in solitary confinement because a few months later he was still trying to peel the sentence and say, you know what, I didn't do this, but my defense attorney didn't have enough time to prepare. We didn't have not enough time to prepare witnesses, which to me is ridiculous. The evidence was <coughs> overwhelming. You're going to um, have character witnesses and subpoenas, whatever, in a trial. It was proven beyond a reasonable doubt. He raped these kids in the shower. He even said one of the defense attorney's stupid accusations was, well, in a jock locker room, there's always physical horseplay like that, soaping each other up and wrestling in a, naked in a locker room. No way. Those redneck jocks on a football team wouldn't tolerate that. I mean, there might be between adults and a football team sexual banter or something like that, but no physical does like that. Towel whipping, but that's it. Trust me, even in PE, when I was in high school, we had PE classes, and I hated showering naked with the other kids. I hated that. I did it to get a good grade, but we hated it. I hated it because you know how homophobic I am. I don't want to be naked as a high school kid or junior high school kid with a whole bunch of other kids in the shower. Other men, no, I'm not gay. I don't want them looking at me, and if they tried anything to me, I'd have killed them. But the coach stayed in his office fully dressed and wouldn't even look at us, thankfully. No teacher showered with the other students. It didn't happen, so that was ridiculous. Ugh. Quite frankly, I think there's something a little homo about the whole locker room scene to begin with. You know, in high school football or in high school, you know, physical education. They shouldn't make the kids take showers. Shower when you get home. Or don't shower. Don't even have a locker room. Just wear regular clothes and go back to your class. Don't even undress. Don't do anything in a shower. I, I think that's wrong. Because I think it's a little gay. It's a little on the fairy side. You know, you take your clothes all off and completely naked with another man. Hey, great game, great football game. I think we did a lot of good in PE. I certainly like playing the volleyball. That is so queer. That is just totally homo. It's just, ugh. no way. Nothing like that. I want no part of it. We all had an unspoken rule. We didn't look at anybody. We didn't look at each other. We just, we didn't like it, you know. Even some of the other kids would just play like, you know, comedians or something, you know. I can't even remember the comedian's name, but, you know, comedians and certain recording artists and just whatever, and, you know, did whatever the thing, and just as entertainment, you know, because that's what, you know, to get your mind off being naked with other kids in the shower, and I appreciated that. I, that that's fine by me. I, I, I kind of like that, and just, you did it as quickly as you could. You didn't talk to anybody. If you looked at anyone, you looked at their eyes and their face. You didn't say, hey, nice butt. You had gotten killed. You had gotten killed. I don't know that. Uh-uh. Well, this Jerry Sandusky was raping the little kids in the shower. Penn State, or whatever it was, covered it all up. Unbelievable. And all of those people that covered it up were convicted of covering it up. Unbelievable. I wanted to talk about this for so long. Oh. Oh, by the way, I always got good grades in PE. I wanted to get good grades, so I did it. You know, only 
when it was forced on me. I never took it as an elective. I didn't want like it. The problem is with Pete. Here's the outrage of how he became an incredible, a successful pedophile, a big pedophile. Why did people trust him? Why did Kent State trust him or Penn State or whatever it was? Because he was able to hide behind the mask of absolute all-American conformity. Say it again. Not character. The parents who let him along with you know, their children, the Penn State or whatever, did not look at his character, just his conformity. That's why he was such a successful pedophile. Because he was all American. You know, you're a coach, you're on the football team, you're all American, playing the all American sport of football. He was married. He was wealthy. Hey, that's important. Married and wealthy. He wasn't poor. He had kids. Oh, perfect image. A nice home. Not a poor apartment. A nice home. He was an all-American jock. Say it again. All-American redneck football jock, and he dressed well. He didn't have a mohawk, but he didn't have much hair to begin with, but he dressed very conformist-like. Unbelievable. That is why people trusted Jerry Sandusky. <clears throat> Not for what he did. Not for his character or what he was inside, but because of what he projected. Perfect conformity to society and the establishment. And that's why he was able to lead that double life. Say it again. That's why he was able to get away with it all those years. Because as a pedophile, he used that as the sheep. A True pedophile will not stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, it just proves that in America, it, you're not judged on your character, but on your conformity. If you are a conformist and an all-American redneck jock with money, good clothes, and you're on a revered Penn State football team, And you're all American, that's why they trusted him. And I think that's why they couldn't believe what they were seeing with their own eyes when they saw him rape children, even at Penn State. It's like, how can he be doing this? He's our football hero. And people that had heard allegations of him before, they didn't believe him. <clears throat> they didn't believe there had been allegations made against Jerry before, but people couldn't believe it because <clears throat> How can we, how can he be a pedophile? <clears throat> He's our <clears throat> football hero. <clears throat> He's our football hero. <clears throat> He's all American. He's not a poor person. He's married and has a nice home. He's a conformist. <clears throat> he can't do this. <clears throat> And they never believed him, and everyone was shocked. How could Jerry have done this? He was on the football team. 
In other words, it's, it's a <coughs> caricature and stereotyping. Everyone on the all-American football team is good. All people who are, are poor and have ragged clothing and punk rock clothing are bad. Isn't that disgusting? That would be like saying all police officers are good. You know there are a lot of corrupt police officers. A ton of them. Nobody believes everyone has the police in high regard. Oh, that police officer who lives in an up middle class home. Oh, he's so wonderful and such a conformist to society. Oh, isn't it disgusting when a lot of them look at the Boy Scouts of America. Everyone revered the Boy Scouts. Oh, they're all American. Oh, they teach kids to conform. And they, they support the establishment in this system. And even they've had their own perversion files. You know, of Boy Scout, of troop masters and scout masters raping the little Cub Scouts. And all the parents trust them. Oh, they stand for the establishment in this system. They are all American um, sports heroes. They're teaching kids how to stay in school and be good little robots to the establishment. They can be trusted to be alone with kids because they're all American conformal establishments making our kids robots of the system, which is what we want. That's the problem. They weren't looking at what Jerry Sandusky did, but who he projected. They hated Michael Jackson, okay? You know why? This is the awful truth about society. This is one of the horrible things. This is their dirty little secret because Michael Jackson was different. Say it again. Michael Jackson wasn't on trial for allegedly molesting, you know, a 13-year-old or something. He was on trial for being different and being quote-unquote weird. Say it again. Now, Michael was completely innocent. He never raped a child, anything. I stood up for Michael Jackson. Even his defense attorneys knew he was on trial for being different, for being Michael Jackson, for being weird, quote-unquote. He wasn't on the football team. He didn't dress in conformal clothing. He was different. He loved his beautiful mansion he called Neverland. He loved childlike things. He loved being Peter Pan, and he loved being strange, you know, and he had Bubbles the Champ and all this other stuff, and he slept in a hyperbaric chamber and all this stuff, and he had the weird makeup and the plastic surgery, and, you know, he lived a Peter Pan life, and they thought, ooh, this has got to be the child molester. He's different. He thinks he's Peter Pan. When a jury acquitted Michael Jackson, you know that, say it again, God rest his soul, completely innocent, just different. Jerry Sandusky truly was an absolute, died in the wool, absolute child raping pedophile scumbag. That's what he was. Say it again. He was a child raping scumbag. Jerry Sandusky. You're all American conformo to the establishment who supported the system and you know, obviously I'm sure dressed in a suit and a tie a lot of the time mentored kids in the all-American football program and how do you get more all-American than the all-American football team at a prestigious university you got that you got it made you are dyed in the wool certified true blue all-American conformo establishment conformo to the system and the establishment why Helping kids. He was wealthy. He had money. Oh, that's enough. He was married with a nice home. So he had it. Everyone trusted him because of his money, his nice home. He was married to kids. And he was an absolute diet in the wool establishment conformo to the establishment football team system. That's why people have these jocks and everything revered all their conformo. They all kids conform to the system. Oh, they're the ones really to watch out for. Say it again. <clears throat> they're the one parents trust to leave it alone, where there's not because of the what, what they do, but all because what they look on the outside. Isn't that disgusting? 
this is a society where people don't look at see what, what are you inside it's all how you dress and not only that what positions you get in society how you dress do you like the football team do you support the establishment but if you don't I mean, if you do, then you're wonderful. But if you don't, and don't look that way, then you're suspected of being the pedophile, even if you aren't, or a bad person, even though you could be a saint. Isn't that disgusting? People only look at the surface, not who you are as a person. <clears throat> That's why so many pedophiles are successful. <clears throat> Have you ever seen the program on MSNBC, To Catch a Predator? Well, I've seen it many times, and that show, To Catch a Predator, it's no longer on. I don't know if it's on anymore. Maybe it is. <clears throat> they don't do that anymore. And it's sad because it was really something that was working. <clears throat> what they would do on To Catch a Predator, they would work with a local police department to set up a sting operation for pedophiles. Because a lot of pedophiles will troll for little kids on the Internet. <clears throat> okay? And... And they set up this meeting. Now, the person who's pretending to be the 13 or 14-year-old boy, or whatever, is actually an undercover cop. So they meet up at this house <coughs> um, to have a meet-up for sex with this pedophile. A pedophile might say, well, I'd like to come to your house and have sex. And the pedophile will, the cop will say, cool, could you bring some beer and condoms? And they will, okay, I'll bring some beer and maybe a sandwich. Okay, how do you get to your home? And I have talked about this before. <coughs> and... Once the pedophile shows up, the pervert, they're greeted by, I can't even remember who the guy was, for, it was Dateline NBC, I originally was doing this, you know, and say, oh, who are you? <coughs> well, let's go over this transcript. You say you want this, and you wanted to do this to this little boy. Why? I'm such and well, it turns out, by the way, I'm such and such, and this is Stateline M MSNB, and this is Stateline NBC, and we're doing a show on pedophiles who prey on children. Now, if there's everything you want to say, go ahead, otherwise you're free to go. Then they all get arrested. <coughs> well, you know who these people are <coughs> that are the pedophiles? Are they punk rockers and leather jackets and poor people? who look like scumbags or derelicts are... No, they're not. <coughs> and they're not poor or anything. They are respected pillars often of the community. They are. <coughs> Doctors. <coughs> school teachers. They're truck drivers. Computer specialists. People who look normal act normal and are conformist to the establishment and the system. People you would never think of raping children. They have money, a lot of them have children, and they are conformos to the establishment <coughs> and the system. <coughs> That's how they get away with it. A pedophile, a true pedophile would never put on a leather jacket or spike his hair up or have long hair and a long beard. No. Stick out. They want to fit in to be the conformos to the establishment system. That's why parents trust them. Isn't it sickening? to check on the time and I have to use the restroom. There is so much to be learned by this. And I've wanted to talk about this for so long. Okay. Now, they would never trust punk rockers or people with Asperger's with kids. These same people that trusted Jerry Sandusky. Because they're different. Because <laughs> they're different. And they don't trust people who are different. But Jerry, they trusted him. Jerry Sandusky. 
even though punk rockers and people with Asperger's do not rape children. People who are punk rockers and hippies do not rape children. People with Asperger's syndrome will flap their hands and talk to themselves do not rape children. They would never trust a quote-unquote Aspie with their children. Why? Because they're different. Oh, they might rape the children. And if you have a label of Asperger's, which thankfully in the new um, DSM is no longer, you know, um, a, a diagnosis even, which is, I think, is really good. We've talked about that. But they all single out. Oh, you're different. You can't be around children. You can't even talk to them. But... Boy, if they were on the football team like Jerry Sandusky. If they conformed, they could get away for years with raping children. And the parents continued to trust them because it's not about who, what you do. It is not about what's on the inside of your character. It's about how you look and how much money you have, and that's important. And whether you're an all-American conformist to the establishment, like football. Like, the problem is, there was a book called The Death of Outrage, which by, I can't even remember who it was, General Cooper or something under Reagan. I didn't read it, but there is a Death of Outrage, but also, this is a society where you're not judged by who you are as a person, but by how much money you have. That's your worth as a good person, how much money you have. The Bill Gates, they're trusted because they have millions. If you have a little less than Bill Gates, then you're not as trusted. If you're Donald Trump, you're completely trusted because you've got money. But if you're poor, even though no fault of your own, if you're working in a minimum wage job, flipping burgers, or you're on disability, you're never trusted with anybody. You have the mark of Cain on you because you're in poverty. That really is why I think the people on welfare and food stamps and social security are hated and thought of as bums and lazy because they're poor. Not because they're bums or lazy, because they're not. They're not bums, they're not lazy, but they're perceived that way. They're perceived as having their good name and character ruined, because they're poor. But a Donald Trump, even if he were to just quit working tomorrow and just sit around and eat candy and watch soap operas, he could get away with it because he's rich. And if you're rich and have a nice home and have lots of money, sadly, you're the one who's trusted. Not because of your character, but because how much money you have. Say it again. Isn't it disgusting? Punk rockers, hippies, people who are on the Occupy Wall Street movement don't rape kids. And ask people, Asperger's who are different or how are poor and on a disability. We don't rape kids for the most part. I don't think they don't. But they don't. But they would never be trusted with children. That's the whole sickening thing. They're not trusted with anything, period. You know, I was just thinking as I was going to the restroom, you know, I told you years ago when I went to Lewiston, Idaho, 1998, there's a show about these and some other things in Lewiston, remember? I've often played the easy listening from Lewiston, but I've done other shows about Lewiston when I tried to move back there. I told you that the police profiled me when I was walking down the street and carded me for warrants... Because I was different. Because I was a punk rocker with a mohawk. <clears throat> I don't have any warrants. They still kept an eye on me. Say it again. There's probably some pedophile in Lewis in Idaho going around raping kids and they leave him alone because he dresses well. Isn't that disgusting? There are probably a lot of criminals they never caught who are actually raping kids. They left them alone. 
because they judged only by a person had a nice car, a business suit, or whatever. But I wasn't a criminal. I'm a rebel against society and against the establishment. <clears throat> Because I'm a hardcore rebel against the establishment and the system, they thought I was a bad person. <coughs> and that and they meant thought I was the criminal, when they were probably leaving the real criminals alone. Say it again. Or it would have been the same if I had had long hair and long beard and was a grungy hippie. They would have thought, oh, there's a pot-smoking hippie. He's up to no good. Probably from the Rainbow family of doing drugs. We got a card in four warrants, and maybe I, if I was hippie, I would have been completely clean. Some pedophile with a suit and a tie running around or doing charity work for children, they would have, in Lewiston, the cops wouldn't have gone after them because they look nice. They look like they have money. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I've told you this before. <coughs> they changed the character of Lewiston and tried to make it another Spokane. Say it again. And I heard through the grapevine that the entire city council was impeached for doing it. Lewiston, Idaho, as I told you, used to be a wonderful place, kind of like Willoughby on the Twilight Zone. A perfect place of perfect harmony, peace, an old rustic band, in the park, and they usually actually had ice cream socials in the park with old men who would play various instruments, and it was like something you'd see 200 years ago. Very accepting of all their neighbors. But they wanted to get, um, them make it a big Spokane, New York-style city with big investors, with big money to come in and invest in business and business opportunities. And they, they wanted more people to come to Lewiston and have a bigger town. They didn't want more people because they went after me. I'm a person, but I don't have money. They wanted people with the money, like from New York City or California, to move in with the big money, the millionaires. Take it over and become a yep. They tried to yuppify it <coughs> with a lot of yuppies and political correctness, and it ruined it. I'm sure somewhere in those yuppies and those politically correct people and the such... There are a lot of people who are raping children. And the cops probably don't even know about, care about it, but they cared about me when I wasn't doing anything like that and I didn't even have warrants out for my arrest. Let's say there might have been an old man who had driven in through Lewiston. I don't think it happened but who was a football coach and mentored youth. An old man. Would the cops have gone after that old man who was on Penn State? No. But what if that man was raping children? That would have been Jerry Sandusky, folks. Say it again. If Jerry Sandusky had gone to Lewiston, Idaho, you know, before his arrest on child um, molestation and rape charges, the police would have left Jerry Sandusky alone. I guarantee it. Say it again. I guarantee it. If he had been stopped for a traffic stop, he would have just said, I'm Jerry Sandusky. Here's my ID. I have, an, I have millions of dollars. And, I tell him, and I'm on the um, um, Penn State football team. I'm on the football coach, and I mentor youth. The cops would have said, Welcome <coughs> to Lewiston, Idaho, Mr. Sandusky. Maybe you could come here and you know, talk to the high school kids or some of the elementary school kids about staying in school and maybe, you know, play a little football with them. All right, way to go, Jerry Sandusky. And they probably said, don't worry about this ticket. We're letting you off. I'm sure your insurance will pay for it. How about you come to the elementary school here or whatever, <coughs> or <coughs> middle school. <coughs> oh. oh, excuse me and help out the youth at risk, you know? He would have done... 
the, the cops would have done that. <coughs> Lewiston would have accepted Jerry Sandusky. And Jerry Sandusky, <coughs> even though he was a visitor, would have been raping the little youth and the middle school children at whatever j junior highs, wherever they have in Lewiston anymore, Jennifer Junior High or whatever, <coughs> who were trying out for the football team. Jerry would have molested them, and the cops wouldn't have batted an eye or not known about it or not suspected because... <coughs> Jerry Sandusky is a perfect conformist to the establishment, and that's what the cops in Lewiston were looking at. They thought, that person has long hair. He must be the bad guy. That person has short, normal hair. He must be the good guy. <coughs> Unbelievable. If I had had a suit and a tie and had a nice car, I could have been a drug dealer, a major drug dealer for major players and set up a major drug operation if I wanted to. <clears throat> a nice car, um, gone to a nice hotel or someone's nice home, and had a suit and a tie, they wouldn't have even suspected. And I could have been the real criminal. <clears throat> but no, I was a punk rocker with a mohawk and spiky hair and t-shirt and <clears throat> ripped t-shirt. That's why they went after me, <coughs> even though I don't rape children at all. <coughs> oh. <coughs> this winter, it's kind of been a strange winter. It's sunny out and such, but it's cold enough I get congested and all that. <coughs> Um, something I want to uh, refute to reverse. Reverse, I want to reverse this notion, refute it, eh, that jocks and conformals are gods. There is not. <coughs> Say it again. <coughs> jocks and conformists to the systems are not gods. They can be very evil. <coughs> There is no profile for a pedophile. Say it again, none. Can you prevent pedophilia? You can't. That's the thing. <coughs> you cannot <coughs> prevent pedophilia because there's no profile. You can only teach kids to react and get away from a pedophile and what to do if they're stalked by a pedophile <coughs> or touched by a pedophile. You can never look at a person and say, by the way they dress and look, that person's a pedophile. But that person has a suit and a tie and he's on the football team. He's not the pedophile. That doesn't work that way. Now, I'll grant it. <coughs> you know, there are pedophiles that look like pedophiles. In my neighborhood, there was a pedophile running around, or I heard something. <coughs> there was a poster up on the trees about a dangerous pedophile in the area, <coughs> and he's trying to get the kids. <coughs> this idiot, <coughs> this idiot, <coughs> was the world's worst pedophile. <coughs> he looked like a pedophile. I saw his face on the posters that the parents were putting up, and he looked like one. <coughs> he was a registered sex offender, there have been reports or rumors that he'd been <coughs> harassing the children or something. And <coughs> he had this trench coat <coughs> and a mustache. And he looked like a middle-aged guy with a big mustache. And a, I mean, it was unbelievable. He looked like a pedophile on the playground. <coughs> you know, just give him binoculars. So there are pedophiles <coughs> who do look like the creepy old man type of pedophile. <coughs> there are there are pedophiles who look that way who are that way <coughs> who are that way <coughs> but a lot of them are not you, there's just no profile <coughs> well 
well, you know, when the story about the um, sex abuse scandal in the Catholic Church broke, Everyone believed it and believed all priests were um, guilty. <clears throat> they thought all priests are guilty <clears throat> of raping children. Well, I still don't believe half of it. And you know why they believed it? Because priests are not married. <clears throat> they, a lot of people think that because priests are single, they must be weird and different. <clears throat> what are they doing being single? You know, that's another thing. If you're single, you're more likely to be singled out for prosecution for if you, they think you're a pedophile. <coughs> they think you're a pedophile. They're not married. Unbelievable. <coughs> Jerry Sandusky was married. That made people trust him. Oh, he's married. Here he was raping children. <coughs> a lot of married people are child molesters. That's very common. <coughs> I gotta get Kleenex or something. What are the solutions? <coughs> well, I think it's a little cold in here. I think I'll put the heat back on. There really isn't one. That's the whole sad thing. <clears throat> there is no way to say who the pedophile is and who it isn't. <clears throat> Teach your children how to react against a pedophile, what to do to get away, and who to tell your mom and tell mom and dad or whatever. But you got to emphasize that there's no way to say, there's the stranger. Here's not the stranger. <coughs> now, it used to be standard practice. <coughs> Here's the person you can trust or not. Because <coughs> even the people you think might be trustworthy, because they have a suit and a tie, a lot of times they're not. <coughs> they can be the pedophile. You can't tell... Who's the pedophile? Who's not the pedophile? You can't do that. <clears throat> I saw this one TV program about pedophiles and, you know, ch training children how to avoid pedophiles, and all the kids asked, there are two men in a drawing, and they said, <clears throat> one looked like a hobo with a floppy hat, <clears throat> had long hair and a beard, and torn clothes, and another guy in a suit and a tie and short, <coughs> nice normal hair who was a nice normal person. <coughs> they asked, who's the stranger? <coughs> the children said, that one, that's the stranger. Is this the stranger? Yeah. The guy with the torn clothes, <coughs> they thought was a stranger. <coughs> then they looked at the nice, normal person. <coughs> and the people held up a photo of a nice, normal person. They got in suit and tie and said, Is this the stranger? And the kids said, No. <coughs> the older adults had to instruct the children that both of them can be the stranger. <coughs> and that's the problem. It's always the people who are different who are profiled. <clears throat> Jerry Sandusky was a nice, normal person with money and a house. That's why people trusted him. But he was the pedophile. <clears throat> All these other pedophiles, you know, like the Boy Scouts, are nice, normal people, conformos to the establishment. Conformos and jocks are not gods, but they're often the child molesters. <clears throat> The only thing, like if I were a parent of a child, I would instruct them about this like this. <clears throat> My children, <clears throat> how to react, how to get away, don't accept rides from strangers or something, but anyone could be a stranger. <clears throat> That's a pedophile. Third day, this doesn't mean that everyone is the pedophile, but you can't tell 
by the way they dress. You can't prevent it. You can only react and then let, um, when you get away, let me or your mother know or, you know, <coughs> whoever. <coughs> we'll go to the police immediately. And I would teach them the difference <coughs> between good touch and bad touch. Like, good touch is hugging and tickling and cuddling, because I would do that for my children all the time. I cuddle them and hug them and love them all the time and tickle them. <coughs> but I would also teach bad touch, you know, touching a penis or raping a person or whatever, that's bad touch. What Touching on someone's knee, that's all bad touch. And if you have a weird feeling about something, get away. If you have a, a trust your instincts, you know, it doesn't, even if the person does have a suit and a tie. <coughs> or is a Jerry Sandusky all-American football redneck type. <coughs> doesn't matter. Trust your instincts if you think something is wrong. Don't say, well, that guy is the all-American conformist to society. He must be good. Now, trust your instincts. You think something's going on. <clears throat> no, I wouldn't trust homosexuals, period, with children, actually. Because they are homosexual, and it's a perversion in the first place. No, I wouldn't trust them. If you're going to ask that. That's already a bad character. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, we must wrap this up <coughs> with prayer. Oh, yes. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you for this show. <clears throat> it's been a topic I've wanted to get to, Lord God, for so long. But I kept being interrupted in that kind of thing. Oh, God, deliver us from these pedophiles. Deliver us from all evil and change people's hearts so that people do not look at the all-American football hero and think he's a good person when he may not be or a punk rocker and think he may be a bad person or a hippie or whatever. Give people the chance to learn from the lessons of Jerry Sandusk and he's evil in Jesus' name. Satan, in Jesus Christ's name, I bind it of pedophiles and the children are trying to rape. I command you back to hell in Jesus Christ's name. God protect us all again, oh God, in Jesus' name. <coughs> well, it's been another long, good day. <coughs> So I'm going to tell us a realistic joke to lighten the mood because it's been so serious. <coughs> oh, yes. <coughs> the surreal piano. <coughs> and we have Blindy, the fascinating hand puppet, to tell us a realistic joke. Oh, yes. Blindy, the fascinating hand puppet. <coughs> Oh, yes. <coughs> Here, it's Blindy, but first we must play the surreal piano. <coughs> Our usual song. <coughs> A, B, C, D, A, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Spinning in the spinning dryer. What a fascinating theorem. A, B, C, D, E. And just because I sing weird stuff like that and tell us real jokes doesn't mean I'm a pedophile either. Can't be ridiculous. But here's Blimmy the fascinating hand puppet. I'll tell a joke I've told before. Mm. Um, there was this one chicken that went into a hardware store. Did you ever hear about the chicken who went into a hardware store? It's very fascinating. This chicken, he went into the hardware store. <clears throat> and the hardware store manager, you know, was at the desk counter and 
said, would you like to look at the wall? And the chicken said, no, no, I don't want to look at the wall. I want an enchilada. Ha, 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 ha. <coughs> Wasn't that hysterical? Well, I have my free speech rights to sail this because our rights come from God, even though the Constitution's been pretty much destroyed with Homeland Security and such, and free speech and the whole thing, surveillance. Oh, yeah, essay, yeah. This show was produced with equipment and facilities provided by Missoula Community Access Television, MCAT. This show was produced and filmed in January, year 2014. See ya! <coughs>